Welcome back everyone to TNO The Lessons of Europe. I'm your host, Soviet Mocha Lover. And right now we must do our next focus. Ah, uh, led by the guiding like Mikhail Tukhachevsky, aren't we? Beautiful, beautiful man. But we just finished our productive union in which we have a little more GDP growth and GDP, which we'll look at in just a little bit. And the specter that haunts the world, an allegiance of pragmatism, contacting old allies, H shared hatreds, oil from the West, Propose a sock in turn. Ooh. And a, star, a red star over the world. A global union. Which doesn't look too bad. You get 10% more, more political power, which is not bad, actually. I'm kind of tempted to go down that way. First, Hearts of Steel. I remember that icon. This is from, like, a picture or something. I, from an image or something. Regardless, no surrender. Uh, you know what? We finished the left side of the focus tree. We finished this second left side of the focus tree. Maybe we will go ahead... And as much as I want to do that, let's do the specter of the haunts the world. The specter is haunting the world, but is not the specter of communism, but fascism. For decades, the monstrous fascist bourgeoisie of terrorized workers of all nations, enslaving and erasing entire nations from the face of the earth to keep the monstrous capitalist system alive. The specter shall haunt the planet no more. We must reach out to workers and peasants and build an alliance of like-minded anti-fascist nations all around the world to destroy the fascist menace. Only when jackboots are ceased to march from the Pyrenees to Moscow and from Tokyo to Indonesia, that the proletariat can finally free itself. Right now we're doing pretty well. Actually, I already edited our tank division, so now they have APCs and tanks, which would be very nice, and uh, main battle tank recon, which I love, 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 love. 14 speed, 14 kilometers per hour. Motorized is looking pretty good themselves. No armor, but that's totally fine with me. And we've got 40 combo with divisions, which we should probably get some more support companies too. Actually, motor... Yeah, I should probably do motorized recon. Sli requires slightly more fuel, but you get 0.5 more recon. Why not? I have, before, put on a lot of armor on those divisions. Like... Main battle tank recon, which is a lot of fun, but whatever. So, some of you guys probably would recommend going in Alliance of Pragmatism. Oh, but some of you guys also recommend going down, contacting old allies. Now, I kind of want to do the Socialist International, which sounds kind of fun. Shared hatreds. We might be able to work with the U.S. West Russia requests oil or Red Star over the world. I kind of want to go with an international common turn. So let's go with old allies. Shared hatred is cool and all, but I like contacting old allies a little bit more. Our alliance with the United States may bring us manpower and wealth, but only the fury of the working class can destroy fascism in its entirely. Although the power of the proletariat has been reduced to mere embers across the globe, it may blaze to life once again if we contact the surviving socialist nation and band together against a fascist menace once and for all. By creating a united front against fascism comprised of socialist workers from the globe, the corruption of the bourgeoisie who have enslaved their people will almost certainly collapse in on itself. I'm doing this. Because there still might be a chance for us to ally or integrate peacefully with these guys, but I kind of don't think that's going to happen. Regardless, let's go ahead and do some academic base and scientific research. Yes, please. And here's the GDP and GDP growth. We now have 8.4. Of course, we get 0.7 from doing poverty relief. And I think the union, that one focus that we did, gave us 1% more GDP growth, which is nice. And GDP, I mean, honestly, didn't grow up that much more, so go figure. Yeah, it gave us a slot, barely any stuff. It, it didn't really even matter. Right now, we're still building up a buttload of civilian factories, which is awesome, awesome, awesome. Oh, yeah. Also, I did this off-screen. I did Russian reunification, but that does make our focus tree go away, and we get a new focus tree. The end focus tree, basically, and I didn't want that, so. You know what? Let's invest in construction. Oh, a little bit of lag. China modernizes. Cool. Perhaps the next will be the Chinese century. Oh, God. Maybe. You know what? Screw it. Invest more in construction. Spend, 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 spend. Build, 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 build. Get her done. Contacting old allies. And then we shall do propose a sock turn to create a socialist international front against fascism that can oppose fascism across the globe. We must make formal overtures to the surviving socialist states once an alliance of proletarian states around the globe is formally established. We will be able to coordinate the struggles against fascism in an organized, systematic manner. With central planning, the wrath of the workers, and the wheels of history itself on our side, the fascists will be unable to stop the tide that will come for them. Beautiful. And you know what? If you look at these, like, it's kind of white grayish. Blue and then red. This reminds me of the Russian flag. So it's, I, th I found that kind of weird. We have elements of the Russian flag here. The modern Russian flag. Playing as, well, the West Russian Revolutionary Front. Which I thought was pretty cool. Cool. Anything else here? Not really. Propaganda. I mean, we already... You know what? We can do that. Let's get some more war support. That gives us 5% more war support and a little bit more stability. Let's do that one. Propose a sock and turn to Red Star over the world. Many of our former allies have written back stating their interest in a socialist international front against fascism. Together, them together, and formally draft a plan of, election, of action. Of action. 
uh, the best course of action is to invite them to a formal conference in Rykov, formerly known as Aviatka, to inaugurate the alliance's formation. Preparations for the first international socialist alliance will be heavy for the for be small city for the small city it must be made in advance not only will the city need to plan a series of events to welcome the foreign delegates and accommodations must be made for them but we'll need to plan programs of discussion and debate for the best course of action when the countering the threat of fascism worldwide fear and loathing in la earlier the month noted and founded noted author and founder of gonzo journalism hunter s thompson released his newest book fear and loathing in la Set in a surreal alternate history universe with few rules, the work is a multi-pronged satire on other more serious alternate history works, as well as a scathing critique of the culture of the U.S. in the 70s. Thompson, well, it's not even 1970 yet, it's 1968. Happy New Year, everyone! Thompson spends dozens of pages going into the minutiae of every divergent point, uh, off-color vignettes with overarching story that details how the world of this novel ended up differing from our own, irrelevant and often nonsensical. These stories detail ridiculous episodes, such as a Japanese doctor in Unit 731 accidentally trying a hallucinogenic drug of his own concoction, leading him to pair drop an army of drugged up ghouls in a downtown Tokyo. While critics are somewhat split on these stories, casual readers tired of the oversaturation of the fiction market with cheap, overly serious alt history novels have found themselves a welcome, if odd, diversion from the norm. Linking these various episodes together, Thompson strung out a vague semblance of a plot in this alternate LA, mainly consisting of cheap allegories that attack contemporary American political culture. In one memorable scene, a street gang. Uh, closely modeled on after the good old Yakiites beat up a demonstration of the old yuppie bigots, which who, who were Nixon supporters, also referred to as bloody freaks, all uh, while an inebriated Thompson watches with juvenile glee. While critics and readers alike are split on the novel, at most at least can see it is a scathing and effective critique of the current literary and political climate. Well, it's different, I guess. Whatever is the opi opioid of the masses, I suppose. Well, effective total map are 127%. That's awesome. And, oh, the Ryakov Conference. Let's grab some tactical support. Excellent news. The Ryakov Conference has been a splendid affair. The parties invited were cordial and honest. As old enemies were swept beneath the tide of global revolution, the minor disputes that occurred were quickly settled by the conference chairs, and on the whole, the meeting was both productive and enjoyable. Surprising. If the whole conference has any indication, it appears that the ideological force of socialism will once again return to the global scene. Let the worldwide enemies of the proletariat and popular justice tremble before the awesome power of the allied socialist nations. The international ideal unites the human race. Slightly more authoritarian. Socialism. Very good. Now we can do this stuff, but I'm still ignoring this. That's one of the campaigns where I'm actually not doing stuff from that from that side. Um, I'm going to go to Military Construction 3, because why not? I almost I haven't even touched it at all, really. Red Star of the World, Arc Angles Conference, this International Unites the Human Race. Are we actually in our own faction? No, we're not. The Einheit's pack's pretty large. Hopefully, maybe Vietnam will ally with us. They should be communists? Maybe? Oh, Libertarian Socialists. Ho Chi Minh, huh? Ho Chi Minh having a great time. Uh, black Market Infiltration. Uh, I don't really care about that. I, I really don't. A global union. Fascism is capitalism in decay, but that decay will make their inevitable collapse all the more easier. Across the world, socialist nations and the workers who inhabit them have united around the anti-fascist cause. Bound together by the Socialist International Front Against Fascism and led by the indefatigable Marshal Tukhachevsky, the working class of Russia and indeed all the workers united by the Front's common socialist cause will consign the fascist invaders and enslave them into the ash heap of history. The decisions for the next course of action to be taken are not yet made, but there is little doubt that the earlier we strike, the faster their demise shall be. More political power and better trade deal opinions. And better industrial equipment. The economy is doing great and new reforms in industrial subsidizing have resulted in the shipping of updated industrial equipment across the country. Products are being produced quicker and cheaper. Ooh, look at this. Ooh, that's nice. The further progress of mechanization into the once ossified industrial world will prove a boon to the worker and manager alike. No more long, horrible hours. No more subpar products screwed in by imperfect human hands. Industry continues to march forward. These were a long time coming, however. Increases in budget and a renewed focus on what our industries are making have increased support for a much needed renovation of our country's industrial equipment. Excellente. This is actually a really nice picture. Look at that. The formation of the SOC intern. A step towards the free world. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I like the picture a lot. I really, really, really do. Ooh. Socialist International. Found the ComCon. To facilitate the interest of mutual cooperation among those nations which have adopted the socialist ideology, the Socialist International serves as the premier means of providing global cooperation as, and strategic assistance. Through the SOC, in turn, social states may coordinate with each other defensively and politically, and in a forum to discuss assistance to global proletarian and national liberation movements may be provided. The Republic of Guinea accepts SOC. SOC intern associate status. We received news from the ruling party of the Republic of Guinea that has agreed to join the Solstice International as an associate member. Their presence as observers on the organization's meeting will let them gauge our progress and in times perhaps close the top the closer ties between our nations will lead to growth into full membership. Beautiful. Actually let's go and do this. Found it. And Belize and the United Republic of the Arabian Gulf accepts. Welcome comrades. Welcome comrades. Ruling party of Wolofia, huh? Sweden, oh, look at that, Sweden even. We get Sweden and Belize and Bolivia. 
We are truly a global... What the heck is this? ComCon. A name of international cooperation between social states. The Council for Mutual Economic Assistance offers an opportunity to sponsor the development of less developed nations through ComCon aid and emergency assistance. This is... N Whoa. Yearly contribution? There, we'll deposit that much. We don't have any extra money really to do. Defense fund and development fund? Why not? Wait, join the ComCon eligible non-members? Participants? Oh, join the Scientific Bureau? Sure, why not? That sounds awesome. Uh, cool. Do we actually form our own faction? No, we still haven't yet. That sucks. A global union, though. Awesome, awesome, awesome. A discipline hot. In, in restoring order to Russia, we must take great care to not let a cancer fest beneath our feet. While the core of our forces is still composed of hardened veterans from the West Russian War, expansion and necessitated massive conscription programs. Such a development was a necessary step and was to be expected. However, in our time of isolation on the polar shores of our Congos, much more has changed than we could have ever anticipated. Decades of warlordism has degenerated the average man to a life of drunken stupor and banditry. As the year drags on, it seems that people have become complacent in their suffering. If we're to unite the motherland and drive out the fascist invader, we must shatter these defeatist, selfish sentiments. As representatives of the cause, soldiers are detestable, as functional combat units are men are incompetent. Per the Grand Marshal's orders, mass training programs are to be set in motion. The politically aware will become commissars, and officers will work with veterans to instruct their comrades on small arms tactics. The rabble of a thousand petty nations must be forged into a political, politically educated, respectable, and tactically sound army. Red army, to, to be certain. That's awesome. Now, obviously, no one's really doing too much with it, but that's okay for now. That is A-OK. -okay. We're auto-saving. Muscovine's looking pretty nice and large. I'm pretty sure it was Borman that won the Civil War, right? Yeah, they got the flag back. I still gotta play as Borman sometime. General Assembly opens. Ever since the creation of the Socialist International, work has been ongoing. To prepare a great assembly there, representatives of the World Socialist Parties will be able to gather and discuss issues and propose various motions today. The work is complete and the assembly is ready. Members of the SOC intern will be able to propose motions and vote on them through a secret ballot. The addition of the assembly to the organization's charter will no doubt prove to be an important tool in the struggle to advance socialism internationally. A glorious day for the workers of the world. Whoa. No SOC intern resolution is currently being voted on. Collected defense funds, 1.1500 million. Huh. Mutual nap. Now an efficient pact? Oh my goodness. This is so much more expanded out than what it used to be. Q oh, yeah. Cuba. Status to... Someone. People's Republic of Vietnam. Tajikistan. Membership. You know what? Who cares about political power? I, I want to offer membership to everybody. <laughs> Associate status? Associates. Associate. Oh! Oh, no. Poverty relief. Alright, so the fatal flaw of the capitalist ideology reduced to the basis element is the inherent substitution of greed within the hearts of men. This substitution draws from the degenerative focus on competition where only the fittest can survive. The common claim is that when the competition drives forth innovation and the success of American industry has been pointed to as, to as proof of such. There's a new argument, though. This American technological prowess exists not because of competing corporations and searching to squeeze out every last dime of the, thumble, of the humble worker's labor, but in spite of them. Today, we join something larger than petty barbaric fighting over knowledge that can be shared. Today, we find that corporation or corporation will bring us the international socialist future that all of us have dreamed of by way of technology. Today, we will join our comrades across the globe and join the ComCon Scientific Bureau. Our cooperation is our strength, not our weakness, and the people shall be ascendant. Cool. More minds are always appreciated. Oh, wow. They're all joining. Mutual uh, non-aggression pact proposed. It's time for the SOC intern to consider a new proposal. What do the nations propose? A mutual non-aggression pact between all SOC intern nations. They argue that the revolution must not follow the infighting. This pact is the first step towards making the SOC intern a viable force within global politics, of course. Not everyone agrees, and some will claim that this would be a waste of time, and that this would unfairly restrict the sovereignty of the member nations. We could get 1.79 political power every day. But you know what? We're going to approve the motion. Absolutely approve it. Vote. Oh. All right, Napoleon crossed the river Niman with 400,000 of the finest sons France has ever birthed. Veterans of Italy, Egypt, Spain, Germany. Each man within his grand armée, more than equal ten from the ten from the coalition, and a hundred different qualities, skill, discipline, elan. With them, the emperor glided from triumph to triumph while the patriotic war his empire held the co continent by its talons. That the Tsar would offer resistance against an invincible force is laughable. There's no such force six months later. Borodino happened, Moscow happened, but above all, General Wynn... Tur happened, cutting away at the armée's ranks like a swarm of flies descending upon a fat pig's carcass. Of the 400,000 left Poland, less than a tenth returned to France. History tells us all too well what happened next. I know what those fools called me behind my back if only they knew how terribly right they are. From the man of bronze to the man of dirt. So accepts sock intern status. Well, someone accepted. Cool. To Angenica? Cuba? Cuba. 
Voting on non-aggression pact. So the pact is, is reached General Assembly. The debates from earlier have been revived, attempting to vote, sway votes to their side at the 11th hour. The proponents for such a motion claim there's no valid reason to oppose such a motion, claiming that the only traitor to the revolution would refuse such a signing or thing. The opponents say, claim that it's not for the SOC interim to determine such matters, and that it should be up to individual nations to determine their own diplomacy. Eventually, the debates and arguments ended, and the vote could finally occur. Now is the time for decisions to be made. Do we vote in favor of the motion, or against, or abstain? Do we vote in favor? Pack propose? Approve? Approve? How many times are we going to approve this goddamn thing? Ha <laughs> ha! I want poverty relief, too. Actually, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to get this first. The Tajik Soviet Socialist Republic! Yes! Uh, accepts? Nice. So, I'm going to... Oh, there we go. Wow, if you don't do your focus, we get 2.79 every day. Poverty relief, here we go. And set an example of incompetence and defeatists. Ideological struggle. I like more organization, recovery, and war support. But this gives you more attack, less division, recovery, and more organization. Make an example. Capital punishment. Ooh. We get more stability, less monthly population, more critical population factor. I love Hearts of Steel, but let's go set an example. To those who serve in the Great Patriotic War, desertion is no abstract concept. As the Soviet Union bickered and collapsed all those years ago, hundreds of thousands abandoned their duties and let animalistic panic overwhelm their judgment. While it's attempting to even act and even accurately call such men traitors, it is not productive. A man who is incompetent at, or absent from his post is usually does not so out of mal malevolence, but it sets a dangerous sense of hopelessness. Hopelessness is a disease that is only worsened in the chaotic decades. In light of past experience, the Grand Marshal's Red Army will employ positive heroism as a Pose a foolish and effective punishment. Burning presses are to be scavenged, traded for, and constructed across our lands. We will devise new pamphlets, posted slogans, and mottos. The average soldier's mind must be barraged with reminders of the vital importance of his duties. We will eradicate defeatism and in and in its ashes create a competent, dedicated fighting force. In addition, the role of the commissars will be reinforced. Those that are politically educated will continue to work alongside veteran soldiers and officers to provide much-needed education and inspiration to new conscripts in times of strife. We will eradicate defeatism and create an army of skilled and dedicated revolutionaries from its ashes. Uh, whatever. Everyone seems to be proposing this. Seven, 19 yes, 4 no. Please tell me we have... We have oh, come on, I want the faction. I want to create a faction so badly. Actually, before we see this. Okay, cool. After that, an ideological struggle. Of all the Earth's children, the Russian people have suffered the most, whether it be the struggle to modernize, industrialize, or defend itself. The motherland has long cried out and buckled under the weight of its burdens. Instead, indeed, the tale of the Rus is one of woe. Today, the Russian people bear yet another burden, the burden of responsibility. The Red Army is all glory and might is international in character. Upon its red banner, it carries the world. Behind it gathers a bloody band. Poles, French, Czechs, Ukraines, the global proletariat cries out under the fascist yoke. It is our solemn duty once again to answer this call. Grand Marshal Tukhachevsky has equipped the nation to confront our, this oppressive evil. Our struggle lies not only in liberating Russia, but the working classes of the world. To the millions who now toil in wage slavery, and the millions more in Chatel bondage, we say this. We've heard your sobs, we've heard your shouts, prepare for our arrival. Goodbye, Salazar. We are the vanguard of the oppressed of the world. It is a burden we endure with pride. Failure is no longer an option. Do they work at NASA? Hmm. We're gonna get... Ooh... Ooh, let's do that one first. Because we are we are a professional army here. Spotanic discipline. We are two-thirds of the way getting there. Nice. About ten days left. Let's get this one done first. Well, actually, we could probably just go ahead and read whatever. Let's go and read this one. No surrender. The Great Patriotic War has taught us a cost of surrendering to the Germans. We cannot be defeated like that again. Our generals must understand that they cannot surrender even an inch of Russian soil to the enemy. Every offensive must be pushed through no matter what the cost. Every defense must be unyielding. The units fighting where they stand until the last man dies dead. Or lies dead. The Grand Marshal has issued a new directive to the generals regarding this new approach of warfare. It lays out a series of new policies and theories from consequences for officers who withdraw from position to how to motivate infantry into attacking an entrenched enemy. The directive has been defined by its final line that seems to summarize our new doctrine in a single sentence. Not one step back. Absolutely not. So we got this, this, and this. We could do some more resource extraction. Let's keep doing our land doctrine because that's going to be pretty important. We have a little bonus for this one. Marines? Well, there's no point for us to do Marines. Ground support? Yes, please. Actually, what if we did this? What if we duplicated this? Helis? Can we actually make these guys helicopters? Hel I say helicopters, what the heck? Yes, we can. So if you see, we're only 4 kilometers per hour for speed. Obviously that's not good enough. Because it's because of the recon. Uh, let's see, let's go up to 14. 16. 14. So basically you gotta remove it. Replace it with that, and there you go. As long as we still got zero, there, now it goes up in cost again. Make sure they're at least 
20 combat with? That's going to cost so many transport helicopters. We might not actually be able to use this, but we'll see what happens. We're going to go immediately make them 40. Boom. Actually, we throw on engineers, but that slows. No, it does not. It's good. Now we're now we're actually out of army XP. That's a little unusual, but okay, cool. High priority. I'll go high priority as well. Beautiful, my friends. And we do have a cup of Hawaiian hibiscus honey lemon tea. Very, very strange. Port heavy machinery. And then land reforms. Uh, even slightly further decreased scoring times. Oh, that's so good. I love it. I love how much political power. This is a very fun campaign. I'll be honest, man. I've said it before and I'll say it again. It's a fun campaign. Uh, artillery is looking a little crazy. Let's grab some more military police because we're going to need that when we take over the other lands over here. No surrender after that one. Good. No surrender, my friends. And discipline in mind. While the most obvious cause for defeat in the West Russian War years ago was Mikhail Suslov's political treachery, there were other factors that could not be, must not be reproduced. Most glaring among these was, as now ex-Marshal Zhukov put it, disunity and dysfunction on an operational level. Liberian Wars. Liberia's dusk. Our soldiers might have had the heart to steal the bodies of athletes and the tactics of Apaches, but they cannot alone win the day. Our commanders, too, will fit the, foot the bill. The challenges inherent to an operating a multi-ethnic and now formerly multinational army must be overcome. Cohesion will be achieved on every level. And the dam is built as Spain and Iberia falls apart. Those that produce, those that strategize, those that fight, and those that will drive will form a united whole, each educated in our deep battle doctrines. Only then can we drive the bandits from our lands. Deep theory battle. The Soviet Union was born at the tail end of a simpler era. Those uncertain days in 1917 were simpler but no less precarious time for the Russian people. Throughout the chaos of the revolution, the humble militia men and the well-timed cavalry charge often secured victory. Nevertheless, times change and with them change practical realities. In more recent decades, we have been thrice defeated. Twice by the Germans and once by ourselves. A lack of centralization in both the 40s and 50s. A foolish strategy of pure attrition in an incompetent command who refused to take full advantage of the opportunity spelled the Union's downfall. Karma Tukhachevsky's theory of deep battles has never been allowed to truly flourish. Practice among certain divisions and only created by a few theorists, is a doctrine that has been half-heartedly pursued. As the final struggle approaches, we must ensure that we have a united command, a professional army and reserves to exploit breakthroughs. We will assault our enemies simultaneously along a large front, sending reserves towards successful pushes and confusing any defensive efforts. In the mechanized age, Comrade Tukhachevsky will ensure that the Union fully commits to a modern doctrine. Better industrial expertise. New training programs that are motivated by a need for worker, better workers and managers has resulted in industrial workplaces that are more exact, efficient, and smart in their production of goods. New technologies and equipment are important, but they will never trump the human element, which is driven by practice and education. These new training programs, motivated by national vocation programs and investments in worker safety programs, have driven our workers further towards true, perfect industrial efficiency. When they clock in, they will become machines of the highest order. That is the goal. I would like to do that, and I would on a bonus for industry, but let's get this one first. Come to your senses. Honored comrades, his voice rang clear in the briefing room, bouncing off its spot in spaces. First, a humble thanks from the servant of the revolution to the many in this room who have helped bring about its success. The room smiled and nodded, cheerful in its complacency. But also I wish to address some addenda to that statement. First, he loved how crisp his voice sounded in the morning like an old drill master. We must acknowledge that our love of numbers made us blind to their quality. Yes, the Red Army is a proletarian force, and yes, we rely on the workers for all things, but we cannot expect that sending tons of differentiated men into the fray, bereft of a common drill standard, weapons, handling, pedigree, or language, will make a difference in battle. That is what made victory so difficult and defeat so imminent in every battle we fought against overwhelming odds. Second, we must no longer rely on the rhetoric of heroism. I will never be enough. It will never be enough to cast a man in a heroic defeats unless all of you want to stand on heroic gallows and call the name of Lenin as you jump into the martyrdom. We have hidden behind this cowardly rhetoric and made it us all laughing stocks. No, from now on we must use men smartly and precisely, or soon not even madmen will think to follow us. Finally, we must change the very nature of our soldiers themselves if we are to succeed. I spoke on quality, now I speak of organization. Gentlemen, it is time to wake your ideas up. I mean, come to your senses. We cannot claim to run a working army when we cannot even keep tabs on how many men we've employed at one time. If we can change these flaws, victory shall soon await the... Stavka and Russia. If we cannot, we should prepare to enter the martyrdom due to all failed and foolish martyrs, for that is where we are headed. Yes, Grand Marshal! As you can tell, I like to get into this a little bit, so. How's the budget? Oh, increased spending. Hey, we're doing better. 4.3 when we increase civilian spending. It used to be over 5. Almost made, I think you can close to 7 at one point. So, not bad, my friends. Not bad. 1.79 is very nice. Deep battle theory, and the next research will be done in less than a month for better, even better tanks. Ah, oh, I love the better tanks. 1947. Well, so when does this get voted on? ComCon? Well, we're the only ones investing into it. Only a million, because we can't afford a whole lot, but you know, whatever. Up in battle theory. Wisdom of the Grand Marshal. More war support. Dockyards. 
Eh, we'll do the wisdom of the Grand Marshal. What is an army? In the time of kings and divinely ordained autocrats, it was often a mercenary force. An elite hit squad bankrolled by the stolen coffers of the elite. In the time of republics, it was a conscripted mass. Drawn from the rabble when the hour rose, it sought to defend its parent bourgeoisie and secure new markets for their exploitation. Yes, these examples serve as apt descriptions of what an army has been. What has remained unanswered, however, is what an army ought to be. Rising above the bickering of Bukhara and the military failures of the past, Grand Marshal Tukhachevsky has ample time to answer this question, synthesizing his wisdom over two decades of defeat. His ultimate answer is simple. The army of the future is international. The Red Army will never be resigned to serve as a simple tool of politicians and said, it will be a political organ unto itself, comprising workers and peasants from across the planet it will know no borders. Men and women will look to it as the vanguard of the salvation and rely on it to forever defend their interests, an essential organ of the social state. It will wage war on any reactionary who dare threaten it, slowly liberating the oppressed the world over. Its actions will forever be in line with the inevitable socialist future. Only then, when all the oppressors have fallen, may its ranks disband back into militia. Our soldiers will hold the sacred promise that all we do, there is no other option. Beautiful, my friends. Look at how our tremendous proletariat workers work very efficiently and with much love. Yes, they work with love. And maybe it's finally time for us to upgrade our guns. Maybe. Maybe. An armored assault, top of that. Key to modernizing deep battle doctrines, mechanization, which in turn finds its companion armored formations. If we wish to combat the fleets of tanks our enemy is sure to employ, we must build vehicles of our own. As the past two wars have shown, the era of specialized armors long since passed. While it may be tempting to use our limited resources to produce scores of light vehicles, it will also be foolish. Using techniques from the newly integrated Gorky Tanks Factory, mass production will begin on a main battle tank. Able to fill all armored roles universally, it must be based upon captured German designs as well as those produced a decade ago. Such a vehicle will be vital in exploiting breakthroughs, causing chaos in enemy supply lines, providing operating spaces for soldiers, and installing reinforcements at any single point. Let the army, or let the enemy, unleash your fury upon us. It matters not how many helicopter crews and shoulder mounted rockets to send towards our advance. With a strong main battle tank to exploit breakthroughs, we will have reached Moscow before reinforcements can even arrive. Easy essay writing. In the rare occasions where Mikhail Tukhachevsky is beset by doubt, the Grand Marshal finds solace in pen and paper. Alone before his thoughts, a flicking oil lamp and Shostak's second waltz. Ah, one of my favorites. So far away from the sniveling idiots who call themselves Stavka, it is here where the general can ponder, reflect, and resolve his battles within and without. The written word has failed him less than his general's own consensus on both counts. And so he wrote, past theories and, pr and present practice mingled with the ink on his fountain pen, leaving a martial dialectic behind every stroke. The Red Army had 50 years of either to draw from, so that his battles formed the object of Tukhachevsky's reflections. The two Tsartsins, Moscow, Serovarov, Siktivkar, comparisons and contrasts between the front and its enemy, troop deployments, tactics, supplies, mistakes of plenty from the first more so. The oil lamp flickered and waned as afternoon he gave way to the evening's chill and still Tukhachevsky wrote, only when he cut the moon's parlor did the Grand Marshal stay his aching hand. Not enough, but he'll have to do, pouring himself under the shot from a half-empty vodka bottle. Mikhail reclined against the seat as he read through his newest essay. As sunlight peaked from over the northern Diva Divna, Archangels greeted another day with a shattering glass and discoherent screaming. Their army has gone to crap, echoed the city's moaning air, and I will be right back. And now, everyone, it's time for the naval war. While the Red Army is rightfully and undeniably the beneficiary of most of our resources, we cannot neglect the role of our navy, which it pos possesses, for what the war is to come. Rumors persist of this day of German submarine raids off the coast of Arc Angles. It is unclear whether these tales can be attributed to accidents between fishing vessels or if behemoths truly are waiting to harness potential mer merchants. Regardless, it is highly possible that German attacks will soon come, become a clear and present reality as Russia stabilizes. If we're to com combat the fascists everywhere they lurk, it's time to rebuild our polar dockyards. In addition, the Grand Marshals also begin ordering prototypes for a new submarine as well as restoring our old cruisers to working order. The venerable doctrines of the Northern Fleet and its accompanying usage of live vessels will be vital to a successful defense at sea. With each piece of old armored force armed forces we construct or reconstruct, we provide hope to the proletariat of the world. Each ship pressed into service will serve as a beacon, providing or proving to all one simple truth that Soviet people are remain unbroken by fascist invaders. And also I've done some other things with getting more political power, like encourage workers organization. Awesome. And research will be done with more infantry weapon improvements. Let's grab some support weapons too. Followed up by Rebuild the Dockyards. So it begins, the humble dockyards of Ark Angles have hazardly modified to accommodate us these last decades, or to be properly expanded. It is upon these polar shores that we have maintained a petering flow of trade, which must now be defended. After this task is complete, new submarines and old cruisers will be constructed. Each ship fresh in its service, a member of the new navy, free of the failures of the past, and ready to sail into the inevitably socialist future. A change of guard. The old captain drew deeply and breathed, cigarette smoke fuming from his nose like a breath of a dragon. The old high hit his brain, coloring his thoughts a faint shade of pink, although, truth be told, every 
everything seemed to be less colorful with each passing year. Perhaps it was the inevitable result of lost youth, the passage of time, or perhaps the captain was simply getting older and crankier. He chuckled to himself. He knew which option he bet money on, and it wasn't some airy fairy nonsense about time. Well, it was lucky that he didn't need to sm need smell to help with shipbuilding. He returned to his attention to the dense blueprint in front of him. The Ognev class as was a son of a gun to build, but no one could say it wasn't elegant. His eyes ran up and down the elegant curves of the deck, the spindly masts, and the expanses of the engine and boiler room. Yes, there was almost almost sexual energy to its raw dynamicism, something that could only he could appreciate. He often joked with his friends that he'd married a ship instead of a woman. That's a shame about his own destroyer, really. It broke his heart far worse than a retreat to Archangels and a sinking in port. And she hadn't even fired her reverse volley. Well, the West Russian government had con contacted him about the promise of settling accounts. The captain had agreed without a second thought. Now, as he watched something larger and better than Ognevoy, Ognevoy, class rise and the dockyard before him, the captain knew he'd made the right choices. The new beauty was not, would never be Ozornoy. But it could be far, could be for someone, thing, someone else what Ozornoy had once been for him. The love of his life and the light in its harbor. And a final job and a parting glance. Now, if you look over here, we actually have tanks here, which is awesome. Actually, you know, I will separate him from the line. That's fine with me. Uh, I love the tanks. Tanks, 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 tanks. Now, I did get this guy. What was it? Andre. And this guy, he is a panzer leader. An expert. Uh, which is okay. But, oh, yeah, this guy over here. Who is also a Panzer leader, but as well as a Panzer expert, so. Uh, Tukachevsky, he is a tank leader. Usinov, ooh. Yakir, huh? Oh, he's level 7, Jesus Christ, that's a lot of attack. Oh, sign me up. Oh, mm. oh, do you have upgrades, Alexander? I'll tune in. Over here? Return, eh, yeah, let's see if have some more political power first for now. Cool. Rebuild the dockyards. Actually, we have any more tech? No, we don't. That's good. Raise the anchors. Yo, he ho, yo, he ho. To the sun, we sing your song. Hey, hey, let's heave along the way. Man, that was terrible. With the new fleet of cruisers and subs, the new dockyards to accommodate them, life is returned to the polar north. New sailors impressed from provinces across Russia embark today. In the service of their duties, they will defend our vital ports when the time comes. For the time being, though, exercises will suffice. Now we fell the stout birch tree. Now we pull hard. One, two, three. Yo, heave ho, heave ho. A double research bonus for stuff. We good. Oh, we almost have... Whoa, we almost have Spartan Discipline. That's awesome. That is... I never. I don't think I've ever gotten Spartan Discipline when playing as a Russian warlord yet. I might be wrong about that, but I don't think we have. All right, so let's talk about the navy. I don't want to talk about the navy. <laughs> yeah, let's just make some convoys. Because our ships, I don't want to make garbage. If you know me at all, like I don't want to make garbage at all. So, current resolution. Uh, maybe this is. Maybe even though this is, says it's in the game, it's probably not. Nothing's really happening with this with the voting, so it might be glitched. It this would come in TNO by TNO two, of course, but. It's fine if it doesn't work, you know, whatever. By the next patch, it might be in the game, but in the next update after this, after Cutting Room Floor, I think it's just more game mechanics, especially with, like I said in the last episode, more stuff about, like, the economy and, like, budgets and stuff like that. I, if I remember correctly, this was originally a TNO... Oh, uh, not TNO. TNO was originally a Victoria 2 mod, which shows definitely, and I would... If you play TNO in Victoria 2, that'd be amazing. I would love that. But regardless, let's finally do Project Indrek. In a quest to build a new Red Army, we've achieved much. Our training programs remain unmatched across Russia, and our news of our military reformation struck fear into the hearts of reactionaries across its vast terrain. However, as we prepare to return our union to the world stage, we must realize that much has changed. In many ways, we have been stuck in time, the sheer scale of devastation preventing us from realizing the new world around us. All the discipline in the world may not matter if, technologically be speaking, the Russian's people are decades behind. The Cold War that grips the world now is a war of wonders. Technology is undreamt of in the Great Patriotic War, miniaturized rockets, atom bombs, jet engines, Helicopters and chemicals are secretly developed and widely employed. The Grand Marshal will not let our efforts be undone by such wonders. Now, begin Project Indrek, a struggle for the Soviet people to have such an arsenal. Indrek consists of several constituent research programs covering everything from biological weapons to MLRS. Of course, the average soldier must remain unaware of this effort, lest it fall into the hands of the fascists unwittingly. Our enemies, our enemy is great and terrible, and so we must be as well. More weapons projects? Oh, yeah. Hey, 4.7, not great, but keep building, guys. You're doing a fantastic job so far. We more... Uh, can we get any more stability from that? We're going to move and get 3% more stability. Why as well? I mean, we almost get roughly 2 political power every day, so... Why not? The Red Air Force. 
June 22nd, 1941, the most traumatic day in Soviet history. It was on this day that the Union found itself stunned by an overwhelming and thuggish assault, as millions perished in a futile defense. An unprecedented humiliation occurred. Over half the Air Force was annihilated in a single day. Young pilots savagely gunned down before they could even escape their runways. Since that fateful day, the dudes have maintained soul dominion of the skies. Every soul of the East, from the smallest tot to the most hardened veteran, has grown accustomed to a life of duck and cover. It matters not how many jets are destroyed or helicopters down, for two more will take their place and continue this reign of terror. As we reunite our land, the Grand Marshal has taken in special care to correct this national indignity. While we can never hope to outproduce the Luftwaffe, we cannot wit it. By requisitioning all aircraft we can get our hands on, training amateur pilots, and iterating on capture jet designs, we will attack quantity with quality. Russian skies are big, blue, and impossible for our enemies to fully cover. Soon our bombs will rain. Down on Berlin to deliver justice for the fallen. Good. And we're running. We're, this will be finishing up our land auction. Great! Great, 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 great. So we need a few more transport helicopters. We're making five a day, so that'll be done in, like, what, six days? Five days? Yeah. I I, I can do math. Sometimes. Sometimes. Ah, Project Indirect. Very good. A massive industrial base is what we need. Look at all the civilian factories we're building. Military austerity? Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. -mm 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 -mm. Uh, if you'd like to be about better army professionalism, I've already read this once in this campaign, so I'm not going to do it again. But here you go. Spartanic or Spartan discipline. Jesus Christ, that that's awesome. And, well, let's read the next... Oh, we actually read the next book. It's right here for So, Project Indirect Status Report. Overview. Project Indirect is proceeding as planned with only minor complications. We are already acquiring resources to begin weapon development, and we expect the first prototypes in one year. Agents are so currently searching for experienced engineers and scientists that could assist with our endeavors while construction crews are being getting construction of laboratories and testing sites. Factories have been ordered to produce materials that are required for early testing. Smirsh is currently investigating a possible security breach. An engineer that was recruited and screened by our agents has appeared in the middle of the night. Breach is considered by a low threat as he did not possess access to any highly classified documents. Family and friends are currently being held for questioning. Individual project overviews are listed below. Project Firmament. Pro team members have recommended that they develop adequate containment methods before beginning research. Request is currently being reviewed by administrators. Project cannot proceed before this request is accepted or denied, but test subjects are currently being acquired. Project Leshy. Team members are currently researching samples being recovered from foreign sources. The most utmost caution is being up uh, applied to handling these samples. Many scientists are experienced in chemical weapon development, and preliminary results appear promising. Minor team is currently working on methods of defending hostile uh, chemical attacks. Experimental gas mask is currently being developed. Project Shukka. Construction has already begun on a testing area in the White Sea. Environment is harsh and hindering progress. Engineers are currently beginning experimental designs that allow for higher resistance to atmospheric pressure and a greater acceleration. Despite temporary setbacks, the construction team is expected to be finished by the time the first prototype is built. More detailed reports listed below. Nice. OBT Pro. Oh! Um, what is this? If you'd like to read about these, go right ahead. Project Oregon? The BM 13 Kayutsha. Ooh. Project Tsai Skolon? Oh. Shuka? Oh, okay. Leshi, of course. Chemical weapons. And ferment. Well, we can only choose really one of these. So, what we're going to do is we're going to choose the most expensive one. Leshi. Uh, taboo and chemical weapons. We want chemical weapons. Or do we want ferment? I'm going to go with ferment because I like biological warfare war and weapons. Just because it costs the most. It literally costs the most. So let's do that one. Why not? I mean, it, actually, 9.1% is not bad. When did it get higher? Oh, the poverty. Poverty rate. Yeah, that's what's up. Uh, let's see. What are we going to do after that? We could do some of the stuff. I do want to wait for more regional development stuff, too, as well. So we can only do one of these at a time, apparently. So In progress. Beautiful. This is actually really awesome. I'm glad I'm playing the West a Russian a Revolutionary Front with Tukhachevsky. And I will play as... Zukov eventually. The Red Army was physically crushed twice, scattered to the winds, but never lost its spirit when the WRRF was defeated for the first time. Naysayers doubted they would ever regain its footing. How wrong they were. The Army's been reforged in both equipment and just been physically and mentally into a well-honed instrument of destruction under the careful tutelage of the Marshal. It has become stronger than ever before. Let the Germans cower on their stolen land for now. We will be back for them later. Our current goal is the Pacific, and we march towards through hell to reach it. In the name of freedom, the Soviet people, and the International Workers' Revolution. You were born under the Scarlet Banner in the ambitious year of 1918. Your enemies have crushed, uh, you have crushed always, you will defeat the Nazis as well. A bonus for land action, too bad we're done with that already. Hey, military police, great. Repurpose Soviet infrastructure? Nice. Military police would be nice, we could do more of that, we could get more armors. Well, actually that's a little bit ahead of time. Let's grab a better APC, because we're still making APCs, and we want to make sure that those are okay. How's our beer looking? Actually, not that 
bad. It could be a lot worse. This would actually be a lot, 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 lot worse. Oh, Franco, you lost it, huh? Big sadness. Big sadness. Oh, good. Mechanical. Yeah. Why not? Well, that takes quite a while. 210 days, huh? All right. Actually, any other research? Not yet. Cool. So we're done with this. We're done with that. We're done with the focus tree. So let's finish up this focus, and then we will unite all this under one other government. Spending 4.7. Not great, but not bad. Keep building us up, guys. Keep building us up. Actually, in the next stage, we can't do any more regional development, right? Hmm. I don't like that. Then. Hmm. An invincible nation. Beautiful, my friends. That's alright, we can just wait like 10 more days. Maybe we'll get one more for regional development. If we wait this long, maybe? Maybe? Actually, does anyone need to train? Wait, we have... Oh, yeah, we have you guys. It's fine, go and train if you need it. Come on. Pop something out here. One more regional development before I click on Russian reunification. We'll be known as the Russian Soviet Fitted Socialist Republic, which would be great. Oh, it doesn't look like it's going to happen. Oh, we have helicopters! Awesome! Oh, wait. Oh, we don't. Well, that sucks. Russian reunification. Russian Soviet Fitted Socialist Republic. Great news, my friends. Great, great news. Kazakh Republic. Yeah. You guys do the same exact thing. You guys are going to be focused actually down here. With motorized helicopters and tanks. This is looking awesome. Let's go and do that. I don't, really, I don't even care. Alright, we could do it into the atomic age. But this is all the front. Comrades, today is the day and now is the hour. With most of the Russia back under our heel, it would be inappropriate to continue the national reclamation as a front. We are a socialist republic, heirs of the Soviet Union and its legacy. Although the armed forces are at the core of the revolution, we must also consider the workers themselves. A Soviet republic shall better represent them, at least officially, than a military with a state. Naturally, we shall keep going, keep existing organizations running the Grand Marshal Tukhachevsky in power. It is he who has dragged the Dragon Army from its icy grave, and it is he to whom the future belongs. Long live Grand Marshal Tukhachevsky, long live the revolution, long live the Soviet Union. Yes, my friends, absolutely. Oh, we saw this one. Good. I, I couldn't remember if we'd had that or not, so. And we got, I think, a little bit more stability, but this is a, as, high we can, as high as we can get with our current modifiers. That's fine with me. Whatever. Whatever. 4.6. Keep building. It's not enough yet. This is all the front. If you'd like to read about agricultural methods, I've already read this once. Go right ahead. For this bread, we thank the father of the bureau, huh? If you'd like to read about end of waters as well, this happens every time you get to the stage in the game, so... Onto a certain future. If one did not know the great men of Russia, aerospace engineering, one would be one could be forgiven. After all, very little of what engineering had been conducted in previous years. But those years were over, and as one of the great men, Pavel Sukhoi would be would work to make his mark. Sukhoi despaired for years at the state of Russia, but with a return of proper socialist government, he was eager to advance his ideas and help build what he considered his an ideal state. Him, which to him, which of course meant skies, who with jet-powered aircraft all too often, however, he had explained his ideas to lesser men. The younger engineer, the young engineer, newly educated but with a history of loyalty to the nation from a young age, had been working under the design for a long-range jet-powered bomber. Russia naturally needed strategic capability if it was to reclaim its natural role as a great power, and this Sukhoi was content with. He was not content but with the design, though. The stabilizer the young engineer had designed was wholly unacceptable. The configuration of the control surface is far too inadequate to provide a pilot with anything other than basic capability. A combined or combat aircraft required more than that much more, and he would communicate that fact, regardless of how insistent he needed to be. Sukhoi knew deep down that the engineer was not acting out of malice, but of simple inexperience. Apart from himself and vanishing a few others, Russians had not designed novel aircraft in many years ago, or in many years. After so, after the design was corrected, he resolved to work to instruct his engineer and others on proper design. Russia would have again a Grand Air Fleet, and if he had anything to say about it, it would be composed of the best designed craft possible. Good. And we're done with the land doctrine. Happy 1969. Hope you're having a great year, everyone. Actually, let's get some jet engines. We're still using some very, very, very old planes. And we'll do some support weapons with uh, how about some infantry weapons improvement 6. Slightly more defense, slightly more soft attack. It's not that great, but it'll work for what we need, right? This is all the front. New territories. Slightly decreased coring time. Why not? 
<clears throat> the last war saw our territory nearly double, while acquisition of critical areas like Zlatalis and Omsk has greatly benefited our industry. Everything past the Urals is in a poor state. Bandits roam the countryside, partisans loyal to dead ideology still linger in the forest, and anti-revolutionary elements plot within cities. Grand Marshal Tukhachevsky wishes to pass an edict for the expansion of all military units, specifically commissars. Every municipality will be given a detachment of military police. Dissidents shall be rallied and shot. Wrongdoers will receive no quarter. Loyal bureaucrats also need to be installed into central positions to help smoothen the rebuilding of Russia. What do we have here? Oh, that's alright. Changing the guard, Tukhachevsky was looking his best, his uniform crisp and clean, his medals polished and resplendent across his chest. The other generals of the Safka flanked him to either side, dressed with him with similar pomp and grandeur. For a moment, he felt transported at a time before the Great Patriotic War to the bright vaults of Moscow, where he spent many a night drinking and playing his violin with the dear Shostakovich, a time of laughter, music, and light. Breaking to out of his haze of memory, the Grand Marshal gave the signal to begin the ceremony. The band to the left began to blare the song of the Soviet army. While to the right, two young officers began to lower the banner of the West Russian Revolutionary Front. The golden star under the which he had fought for more than two decades, under which hundreds of thousands have fought and bled and died for free Russia, fluttered in the wind and then dropped into the hands of the two men below. They folded it respectively and then unfurled the banner of the new Russia. The ceremony was merely symbolic, a statement on how far Tukhachevsky's Red Army had come in a struggle and to unite the broken country. The Grand Marshal would still be commander-in-chief and de facto head of the state, and Stavka would continue to rule alongside him. Yet, in that moment, he knew there was still significance imbued in this event. It signaled to everyone at home and abroad that the town of petty squabbling of warlordism of Russia against Russia had come to a close. The flag of the restored Russian Socialist Federative Soviet Republic raised triumphantly before the crowd, between the hammer and the sickle, representing the unity of peasants and workers arrested with the sword. The symbolism was lost on no one. The Red Army would be sat at the heart of the new Soviet Union and would be armed and ready for the sacred war to come, as it reached its apex, flying high above the heads of all assembled. Tukhachevsky knew that finally the tide has turned. Onwards to Moscow. Wow, that's a lot more political power. That's actually really good. Any more stuff? Uh, yep, that is fine. Train, train, train until we can invade these guys over here. A global union, huh? Integrate the armies. Not bad. That's a lot more equipment that we don't really need. Ar even more army professionalism. Well, that's not really needed. Army profession rapidly improves, but we don't need that really either. Actually, you know what? Um, into the atomic age. Begin our nuclear program. You know what? Oh, second inauguration of LGB. LGB? LBJ. Not LBG. LBJ. Our GDP growth will increase, which I like. Total mobilization? Oh, God. Academic base? I'm going to actually do Into the Atomic Age first, because we can. Russia has long been regarded by powers near and far as a backwater, a vast steep full of peasant farmers. Decades of revolution collapse and civil wars done little to challenge this perception, but this will soon change. With the resources, human and otherwise, that we've acquired during our campaigns of reunification, we possess the ability to begin a nuclear program. The power of the atom is a great equalizer in the ge game of geopolitics, and we shall now act to harness it for ourselves. Great, great, great. How many divisions do these guys have, actually? To rule the skies? Well, that's good for you, Rurik. Good luck with that. 30,000 manpower, up to 40 divisions, which is quite a bit. Soblin has up to 34 divisions, and some manpower as well. So, Jellico re-elected Prime Minister. No idea who that is. Are you guys stop training? Good. Let us prepare ourselves for the struggle that is to come very, very soon. How's construction going? It's 4.2. Still building more. That's fine, fine, fine. And then we found the VKPB. The, ooh, actually, we'll read about that after we do this one. My apologies. Boom. Boom. Here we go. The Russian... Uh, the, re the Revolutionary Front is gone, replaced by the old Russian Soviet Federative Socialist Republic. As such, we would dispense... We should dispense with this quasi-military dictatorship and bring forth a vanguard party to deliver true socialism unto the people of Russia. So long, Zaponorusiske Revolutionary Front... And welcome back, the Vesenzoyunaya Komunistischaya Partia. I can't speak Russian. My apologies. A centralized and political organization run from a central presidium. The new VKP will accept only the finest members of society and revolutionary heroes in its ranks. Some might wonder if it is anything really different than the stratocracy of the old WRRF, but does it need to be? If the WRRF was organized with revolutionary principles in mind? Of course not. Of course not. And actually, before we click on that, we can go ahead and put these guys in here. It's fine. Into the atomic age. Great. We got a lot of political power. Ah, there we go. We can slash spending and still smash the heck out of them. Cool. Let's see. And this is why I want to do this first. Academic base will begin to prove. I don't even want to read. Just, just go and do that. So I guess the regional stage is over. Yeah, the regional stage is over. Reunification, Project Molinia. Yeah, it's over. That sucks. I mean, this is still increasing, even though we already maxed out. 
This is getting better. Better. Oh, poverty rate is about to, finally, finally about to improve. Oh my goodness. Oh, we got to war with them. Nice. Close facilities. Um, you know what? I kind of want to do all this stuff first. Address your uranium problem. Russia is truly enormous land, possessing many buried resources and vast abundance. Unfortunately, however, uranium is not one of those, so far we know. Without a stable and reliable source of uranium, we will have no program and thus no bomb. We must therefore make every effort in order to find the supply as soon as possible. No matter what it costs, we must find new sources of fizzle materials. Still 1.7 every day. That's not bad. Alright, so race for Kazakhstan, we don't care about. This is looking pretty good, too. Awesome, awesome. Uh, what's going on here? So we lost zero guys, I lost 10,000, they've up to 9 divisions max. No problem. No problem. How are the choppers doing? Oh, they are just... Oh, I love... I love helicopters so much. I have a problem, probably. Uh, just come to Alma-Ata. You guys can move pretty darn quick down there. So, next up, we shall do... Oh, this is this one. Source four materials. If we cannot find enough uranium to support a program domestically, we shall have to look farther afield. Agents, legal and otherwise, will be dispatched across the world to research and investigate both known and rumored uranium deposits. Whether we must buy the material, trade for it, or steal it, we will acquire it. The program must continue, and a bomb cares little for where the material inside it comes from. 11 days left? Wow. We're doing very, very well. Oh, we actually took it out. God, I love helicopters so much. Oh, I gotta get all the way down here, huh? And... Oh, I thought that was us. Oh, there goes Scotland. Bye, Scotland. Bye, Dunehammer. A union at what cost? The return of the old. Nice. Hopefully, I can still monetize this video after that play. But, I don't know. Lots of construction. Oh, man, look at the, all the infrastructure. Uh. Oh, finally, go to war with each other. Finally, 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 finally. Let's get some more support weapons. That'd be great. Wow, we have over a million manpower. Wait, I'll, hold on. Well, let's get this done first. Because I love building. Love, love, love construction. So what's going on? Uh, let's see. No, 4.9 billion. Uh, I, can I send volunteers to Solvent? Can we peacefully reunify? That would be so cool if we could. So cool. Right, so we got quite a while for that. If you guys want to train, that's fine with me. And actually, we have so many factories. Never enough, though. I'm just putting everyone under one general. I don't really, it's just really hard to tell if they're actually going to some army, but whatever. I'll expand the Kurgan Mines. Our efforts to locate additional sources of uranium domestically have borne fruit. Just east of the Urals, near the city of Kurgan, surveyors are claiming to have found a massive deposit of uranium ready for explo exploitation. In order to secure the deposit, an entire mining operation with the infrastructure surrounding it will have to be built from scratch. The effort required will be enormous, and the cost even greater, but such is irrelevant. We must have that uranium. We must, 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 must. We lose some stability, some political power, but... Whatever. Good. Next books after that, establish closed facilities. Just as we are desperate to unlock the secrets of the atom, our enemies are equally desperate to prevent us from doing so. Although there are many ways to increase security, very few are absolute, and absolute security is necessary when the stakes are so high. We will therefore sequester our entire nuclear program, laboratories, entrenchment facilities, reactors, and production lines in closed cities. These cities will not permit entry or exit to anyone without indirect, without direct author authorization from the highest levels of government. Although cumbersome and expensive, such is irrelevant. We must have safety and security for the program, and we will have it. Fair street. Oh, interesting. They actually united. Do you get a book street back? No, you don't. That sucks so much. That would be really cool. Okay, you lost everything? Well, we reunified. Okay, so basically, this is what happens after 1971. We still have a little, like a year and a half left for this. Wow. 33 days is not bad either. This is going along very nicely. Because normally I wait to do the uranium stuff last, 
But the way we're currently doing stuff, like, we're doing that pretty much first. So it's a little different than what we normally do. And, I don't know, I just gotta see if we can develop a, you know, a dirty bomb. Why's it gotta be dirty? I don't know. For funsies? U.S. Japanese talks begin. Oh, crap. In the Pacific. Oh, man. If this goes poorly, <clears throat> that's not good for us. Then after that one. Oh, actually, we got some research to do, I think. Ten days. Yeah, let's do this one first. Civilian budget boost? No, 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 no. Actually, without boosting it at 3.6. But by do boosting it up more and more and more, you get more speed on this. So, Very good. So after improved APCs, we can do these small little improvements here and there, which is not bad. But I think I'm going to go with, instead, some better scout helicopters, maybe? Hmm. Maybe not. Maybe we'll go with... Let's get some better motorized. Something easy, something effective, you know. Civil War in the, that place? A foundation for research more than 20 years of civil war has, among many other things, all but destroyed the educational infrastructure of the nation and led to the emigration or death of most competent scientists and physicists. If we were to have any hope of continuing completing our nuclear program, we must address this. We cannot wait for skilled scientists to make themselves known or return from afar for advanced institutes to be reclaimed. We must act. We will directly fund the universities and research centers that we do have and monitor them closely for students of loyalty and aptitude who can begin or be, be directly recruited into our development program. A decrease of poverty, thanks to our greater poverty relief efforts, as well as the expanse of our civilian economy, the poverty rate has decreased significantly enough to be notable internationally. As the government congratulates its upwards efforts, the first official state projections on the impact of this improved popular prosperity are filed, stating that people are unable to access superior goods, economic opportunity shall be greatly increased, and our workforce shall be capable of greater and greater feats. A toast for economists. Project from its failure. Failure! Tukachevsky sat at his desk reading the papers that had been dropped off by his desk for, by his assistant. It was in spots of serenity for once. No news from the east of insurgencies or bombings, only reconstruction and peace. Then his assistant knocked on the door. Tukachevsky was alarmed and opened the door, with the assistant nearly falling into him who delivered a short-winded message. Tukachevsky's eyes widened as he rushed for his phone. I need Yuri Ovechinovkov on the phone right now. It is urgent to the highest degree. He said into his phone with a bite that hadn't been heard since the West Russian War. As he waited for the phone, he opened his desk and flipped through the many lists he had had of numbers and people to call if needed. He circled one with his pen in Grand Army Command. Yuri, are you all right? I just had received news of the anti-thrax leak. Is it contained yet? He said to a scientist, expecting a rush response. He gulped and hoped for a response they would need to solve this fast. I'm Grand Marshal. I've been rushed out of the research lab after the leak had been produced. We had scrambles for our guard to put on CBRN suits to begin liqui to liquidate any infected scientists. However, by the time we had, he was then cut off by Tukachevsky. Yuri, how much of this project was lost? Said Tukachevsky, starting to sound annoyed. He signaled to his assistant, telling him to call the stop to begin and to evacuate assistants out of the region. Yuri, uh, Yuri, Yuri. The scientists gulped. Nearly all of it. During the confusion, fires had broken out and triggered many of the self-destruct devices we had placed inside. After hearing this, the Grand Marshal hung up the phone. He rubbed his face with his hands before slamming his death with his fist in anger at the anthrax leaks. One that could have been avoided so easily. So easily. Gosh dang it, we, poverty gets, we just raised poverty. Now it gets worse. What the heck? Ah, uh, the price of progress. But at least poverty got a little better. It's less than four billion, which is better, but... You know what? We did that. It was really bad. Okay, so what are we going to do? Pending results. We're going to do the the cheapest program, so OBT program. Maybe that'll be better. Maybe going for the most expensive, most difficult thing to research is probably a bad idea. Maybe. So, let's see what happens. Oh, wait. We have four divisions. Hey, a second. Oh, my gosh. We got a second helicopter. Oh, I love it, my friends. I love it. And it seems like there's going to be at least one more episode in this campaign, which is totally fine with me. I love, I love doing this, so... Actually, we never... Uh, let's just make these all light infantry so they don't require any anti-tank. That is one way to do this, so... Even though using infantry would probably be best, having no anti-tank on them just is fine with me. Local recruit force. We'll go civilian oversight so we get more daily compliance. Why not? Not bad. Anything for... Uh, five days left. Yeah, we'll do that one for five days first. Oh, come on. Please don't lose, Salblin. Please don't lose. Ah, oh, Rurik, no. Rurik, no. Basic fighter jets. That'd be pretty good. Nice. After this, we shall do Chase the Sun. Although it'll be a long time before we have an uh, operational nuclear weapon, we have successfully built the infrastructure necessary to ensure that we eventually will. Our laboratories and research facilities are constructed and secured. Our educational institutions are turning out scientists with the necessary skills. Our agencies have secured both domestic and foreign sources of physical material. All that is left is time. When the day comes and we complete our first nuclear test, we can take pride in both our accomplishments and in the knowledge that Russia will at long last 
be free of outside interference. But that's going to end today's episode. Tomorrow's episode will be obviously shorter as we will smash through the Grand Principal of Central Siberia. But if you enjoyed it, this episode, please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below if you haven't already, and I'll see you tomorrow when we shall finish this campaign and unite all of, well, most of Russia under our flag. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.